Hi, my name is Corey. I work at SoundSlice, and in this video, I'm going to give you a guided tour of all the learning tools that are baked into the SoundSlice learning platform. If you've never used SoundSlice, this is a great place to start because I'm going to go through everything. This is a little different than another YouTube video we have where I actually create a practice session and show you how I might use SoundSlice personally. Uh, this is really meant to show you everything. So uh, like I said, if you're new to the platform, this is a great place to start. Could give you some ideas of how you might want to use this yourself or with your own students. So I'm going to get started and show you just some of the basics right away. In SoundSlice, you sync real recordings to notation. And uh, one of the best things about that is that you can play and watch the music happen. So in the bottom left hand side, you'll see a play button. If you click that, you know what happens. So you can play and pause using that button or the space bar. And uh, if you hover your mouse over to the timeline just to the right, you'll see a indicator of what time code you're at and what measure you're in. You can click and drag to advance the playhead wherever you'd like in the piece. And the same is true with using your mouse to click on different parts of the notation. If you tap, wherever you tap, the playhead will move to. So you could hit play after jumping and the recording will go right to that spot. So that's a really quick introduction to the basics of playing. You can fully manipulate the area of the notation and the recording, clicking and dragging to change the size, um, or even scooting it over to the uh, left-hand side there, or hiding the notation entirely if you just wanted to watch the recording. So those are all possible just with some quick taps and uh, shifts there. If you click the gear icon in the lower right, you're going to see a number of different options for how to display the notation. And we're going to get into this in just a little bit. But one thing I want you to see right away is that you can adjust the zoom level of the notation itself. So you can click and drag there so that the notation looks great on whatever size device or screen you're on. Let's get into something a little more interesting. You can easily create loops by clicking and dragging on the notation. You'll notice as soon as you do that, that a highlighted area appears and you can change the boundaries of that area by clicking and dragging on the start or the end. If you're on a touch device, you'll tap this button here in the lower right with the circle uh, and arrow icon. That's how you create a loop, which you can adjust with your fingers. On the desktop, you can just go ahead and click anywhere in the notation to create that loop. If I hit play now, what you expect and what will happen is that the notation will repeat over and over. So this is an amazing practice tool. You can slow that down by going to the speed control in the bottom right. So practicing has never been better. <laughs> That's about as good as it gets. If you wanted to practice with a little bit of a count in, say a metronome count in, you can open up the gear icon in the lower right again and tap the option under play options for play with count in. So if you do that, close the gearbox. Now you're gonna hear a metronome tap you in right before the playback begins. So this is really handy if you're practicing and uh, you know, you've got your laptop in front of you, you got your instrument in front of you and you hit the play button. But by the time you get to the instrument, the recording's already started. So this gives you a little bit of time to get prepared. So. You get the idea. I had the speed slowed down a little bit, so that was kind of a long count in. Now let's say you don't want to use the real recording anymore, and maybe you want to hear a synthetic version of the audio. Maybe that's because the performance is too distracting or, you know, any number of reasons. We generate synthetic audio for every single slice that you put into the system. So to change from the real recording, go down to the menu here that says recordings and switch from the real source to synthetic. The first time you do this, it'll take a moment to load. And now when you hit play, you're going to hear what is sort of like a MIDI playback. So it's not the prettiest sound, but I hope you weren't expecting the prettiest sound for MIDI playback. We do have some options here to change it a little bit. If you click on the little volume button indicator, you can change the entire 
volume of the piece, whether that's the recording or the synthetic audio. You can change individual tracks, which we'll get into in a little bit, those individual instruments in there. And you can also change the synthetic sound of every single one of those instruments. So right now, the default on this particular transcription is a guitar with electric overdriven sound. Um, I know for a fact that if I use guitar with the acoustic nylon, it's much prettier. So I'll play that now. So that's much better. A few other interesting tools we have. On the lower right side, you'll see a piano visualizer, which will light up a virtual keyboard along with the notes of the music. And a similar tool for a fretboard. We also have these tools for uh, fingerboard instruments like violin or cello. We also have support for trumpet and trombone slide and valve fingering visualizations, which is really cool to see. So let's go to an example now with multiple instruments. I had mentioned that that was something I wanted to show you. This is a transcription with two guitars, and uh, I'll just play a little bit of it to root you. <laughs> So there are two instruments playing right now. There's kind of a lead guitar and then there's some background kind of very open chordal music. And let's say I wanted to just focus on learning how to play the background part. So there's two options. You can open up the gear icon again to get to settings. And you'll notice that there's an entire submenu for instrument appearance. Just to show you another way you can get there. When there's more than one instrument in a piece, you can click on that instrument's name and you'll notice that it'll open up the settings box and shake to bring your eyes to it in a pretty cool way. So you can do something really simple here by clicking a solo button, which is going to hide everything except the instrument track that you've soloed. You could solo multiple instruments at a time, but right now I've only soloed the one. So now you'll see that that first part is gone. <laughs> Uh, and that that's really, really handy. Uh, you can further customize the look of this. Maybe you don't want to see the standard notation. Uh, maybe you don't want to see the chord diagram. Um, and then maybe after you've decided that that doesn't help you, you could bring back one of those parts again. So that's really helpful if you've got a slice with many instruments there. Uh, if you have students that are looking at a score, they can easily access their own part maybe a soprano, alto, tenor, bass, choral piece. They can really zero in on the part that they're interested in learning, which is really useful. Let's talk a little bit about the layout of the notation in SoundSlice. The way SoundSlice is set up by default is to show you as much notation as possible for the best optimization of your screen size. So you could be on a laptop or a big monitor or on your phone or a tablet and SoundSlice will automatically render the notation so that there's as many systems as there can be that still look good on a page. And within those systems, the number of bars is similarly optimized. This means that if you resize the browser window you're in, you're gonna notice things wrap in an intelligent way. So a few variations we can talk about are the layout to show horizontal playback where it does exactly what you think. If you hit play now, you'll notice the notation is going to scroll across horizontally. One step further here, you can keep the playhead at the left side of the screen during horizontal playback. That's in the appearance submenu. So you'll see the music kind of comes to the playhead there. One other layout option is to show page view. And what page view does is it makes the notation a bit like a PDF. So no matter what size your display is at, uh, it's going to maintain the look and feel of the notation as if it were almost a piece of paper. So you can see how when I resize the browser now, it's respecting system breaks or anything like that. If you zoom in or out now, the entirety of the piece is going to... Um, you know, keep its form. So this is great if you have important system breaks that you want to maintain no matter what. 
and maybe you want to look at the piece of music as if it were printed. This is a great way to do that. Uh, and all you have to do is click the paged layout. One more thing I'd like to show you about the layout is a feature called expand repeats. So I've opened up a new piece here and it's got a couple repeat bars that you'll notice throughout the piece. That can be uh, a little tricky to practice with sometimes. Uh, it's possible that you lose track of what repeat you're on. The same goes for, you know, DC Alcoda or any sort of um, instructions like that. We've got this fun feature called expand repeats, where if you click that, Sound Slice will automatically render the music that's been repeated multiple times so that you don't actually see a repeat sign anymore. Uh, you see the exact same passage sort of copied and pasted next to each other. All you have to do now is follow along the music and you don't have to worry about where you have to jump back to. So that's a fun feature that you can enable or disable whenever you'd like. Let's go to another example. This is a saxophone etude for jazz musicians. Uh, something I wanted to show you about this is uh, the transposition tool that's baked in. Right now this person is playing I think an alto sax I, I can't actually tell maybe it's a tenor let's say you play an instrument that's in a different transposition than what the musician here is playing you can open up the settings icon and notice the transposition menu if you hover over this slider you'll see whatever key the uh, music is written in which is in the key of a and you can click and drag that to shift the transposition to your own instrument or maybe to another key that you want to practice in and you'll notice that even the accidentals and chord diagrams are going to shift along with the changes you make. So everything is spelled out enharmonically exactly as it should be. So this is such a useful tool. Uh, you don't have to worry about providing multiple keys for your students. Uh, they can change this however they like. And you can really encourage them to challenge themselves by practicing in different keys very easily. One other handy feature to check out here is the metronome. And the metronome is going to tap along with the recording. It's not something that taps along by itself. It's something that maybe if you're listening to a recording and you're having trouble finding the beat that you would turn on and it can tap along with that recording. So let's try it out. I'll start the recording on its own first. <laughs> One thing to note is that the metronome matches the recording exactly, so if the recording changes in BPM, the metronome is going to follow along with that. So if there's a passage that's more rubato, that metronome feature is probably not as useful as it would be for something that's much straighter in time, like this example. So I hope you've enjoyed this tour of all the learning tools that are in the SoundSize platform. I hope it's inspired you to practice yourself and maybe put together some things for your students. Uh, if you're curious to see more things that you might practice with or other things to be inspired by, you can go to soundslice.com community and see tons of lessons and transcriptions that other people have made. This would just be a great starting point if you want to try out some of these learning tools yourselves. So again, thank you for checking this out and I hope you have a nice day.